everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion. And next in our series of downsizing, since we've been talking about cases, we're going to stick with cases and downsizing your system to smaller cases, whether they be more of a plateau finish or they be of a, a column stand or a flat, etc. This happens to be the Bit Phoenix Pandora case. It comes with or without a window and it is totally aluminum on the outside. It does have some steel and some plastic components also. Our focus mainly in our last two editions of downsizing was more on the motherboard and maybe the video card. As we talked about, you know, you have to make sure that you have to have the correct size motherboard to fit in your case. Can the case fit? An ATX, an a, a full ATX motherboard, or do you need to maybe repurchase a motherboard and purchase an MATX or a Mini ITX? Then we also talked about video cards. Is your video card going to fit in your system? Well, there's a couple other things that we need to look at also, and that's going to be cooling because some of these cases, especially this one here which is only actually six and a half inches wide, might not hold your heat sink. Heat sinks can become a problem when you're talking about downsizing. For example, we can take a look at this Noctua heat sink. It's a standard size heat sink. It's not very big, but because of its length, it's not going to fit in. You're actually going to have about two Two of these, two of two of your heat pipes, which are actually going to come in and stick out about that far, about where my finger is. So this is not good. The next option is these plateau type fan heat sinks. You would think that this has a lot lower. It's not as high, I mean. So it's got a lower lower center to it because it's a flat plateau. Well. Unfortunately, this isn't either. This will actually stick out about a quarter of an inch by the time you put your motherboard in. You can get a, uh, maybe a smaller fan to have it fit, but you're really talking about not a lot of room on the side. And we'll go ahead and when we open it, we'll, we'll, we'll show you what we're talking about here. So this isn't going to fit. So now you have to make sure that you have the correct cooling for your case besides the video card, besides the motherboard. You also have to make sure that you have enough room to house your SSDs or hard drives. So the Pandora case has a very nice finish. Again, as I said, it was aluminum and steel. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. I've already pre-installed everything into this case and I'm not going to go ahead and take everything out or put everything back in. So we're going to go through the case. We're got, actually going to look at it with everything pre-installed. I'm going to show you how to take off the panels. I'm going to show you the back of the case. I'm going to show you the front of the case to show you how things come off. But I'm not going to uninstall. One thing that I can honestly say is so, cases of this nature do require a lot of time to actually sit there and put them together. So if you don't have time, if you don't have patience to sit there and route wires and do different things or work in little tight spaces in a sense, you're not going to want to downsize to something this small. As you can see on the side, we have some nice side panels here. They actually pop off. They don't come off in a traditional manner. So they do pop off. And this happens to be the back of the case. And the reason why I'm starting from the back of the case for this is because I want to show you the wire management on it. When we look here, we can see that the motherboard tray comes straight up down to the bottom. We have room for our power supply underneath. Underneath here is where I have all the wires. You'll notice that these wires are pretty, pretty smashed down together. I'm not going to recommend that you use a bundled cable wire. Either use a ribbon cable, 
meaning a power supply that has a ribbon cable or in the individually sleeved cables. Reason being is you're not going to with a regular power supply with that with that thick bundle, you're not going to be able to get it back here to route your wires so you can get it behind and actually close your case. You need the flatness. There is no work, no room at all to work in the back here. So on the back we also have one mount for our SSD. Now this this case itself you can either mount three SSDs or you can mount two three and a half inch three and a half inch uh, hard drives. So you got one there's one in the front I'll show you where that is you can put an SSD underneath underneath the tray where this is I actually have a hard drive underneath all this bundled mess which I'm kind of concerned because of heat. Regular disk drives, platter drives, do generate a little bit more heat than an SSD will. And believe me, with all this on top of it, I am concerned a little about, a bit about heat and what's going to happen. The top of the case itself has a removable panel. This is a vented panel, and now we'll show you where the other hard drive goes, the other three and a half. Up on the top here, you'll notice that we have a fan, and this comes standard with the case. And then we have another mount here. Right here we have two little clips, which are grooves, and then up on top we have two screw holes. The, the three and a half inch hard drive mounts into these two clips, and then goes. It, then you would screw it onto the bottom. That's where you would put your second HDD. If you're not using the very bottom of the case to mount your your hard drive. As you can see, the back of the motherboard does have a nice wide cutout for your heat sink. So you're not going to have a problem putting a heat sink in there. You got, you got the area where you can put your bracket, you can mount. If you have to go in through the top when nothing's in, you can hold it through the top where, you, of course, you can take off the front panel and hold it that way. Now going to the back of it. The back of it, as you'll notice, you have five expansion slots here. Of course this is our I.O. There is really no room for you to put a fan. Basically this is going to be a direct flow from front to back with the air and you're also going to have you're also going to have uh, air coming down from this top fan which is a which is actually a pull. It's pulling the air inside the case itself. So you got the front flow going back, you have the top coming in and then of course of course your exhaust. The video card, this is a two slot video card, it is a uh, GTX, oh what is this, it's a GTX uh, 780, so it is a full size card and it does hold it in a second, you'll see how well that the case does uh, accommodate this size of a video card. Going around to the opposite side, again the front, the panel just pops off. And now we can see the, the interior of where we would keep our components. When you're putting in the motherboard, of course this is a, a, an MATX or a mini ITX type of case. When you're putting in your motherboard, I didn't find any problem mounting the motherboard. There was enough room for me to mount the motherboard in, screw it, not get my hands all cut, etc. Where I had my problems with this case was, if you can see this power supply. Power supplies, the largest power supply you're going to be able to fit in here is 180 millimeters. So that's not quite big and as you can see this one is just about 180 millimeters and I have about two fingers length over here because I do have a hard drive on the bottom which means that you have to connect your hard drive with your SATA cable and also your SATA power cable. You're going to have to, if you're going to be using a full-size hard drive on the bottom, you're going to need to put the hard drive in, make sure that the power supply is actually out and not inside of it, in order to plug in your, uh, your SATA connector and your SATA power, because there's not enough room to get your fingers in there to actually plug it in. So that's one thing that you're going to have to do. I also suggest when you're wiring this, put the power supply in, Plug everything in from where it's going to be and then bring your wires down. I know that sounds kind of odd, 
But the way that this works here is if you actually put your wires in first from your power supply and try to route them out, you're going to have a very hard time getting them underneath this bracket here because this bracket is actually where all the wires were. Because if you look at the back, again, here's where I have my wire show. This is the, the only area in this whole case that you have for wire management. I had to I had to tie do tie offs. I had to compress the wires just to get them inside. And I'm only using two VGA cables, one two SATA cables, of course my 24 pin power connector and my 8 pin power connector. That was another thing. The 8 pin power connector as you can see, I needed to hide it in here the, the because I have a dual 8 pin on this. I needed to actually put it up here and kind of slide it in in order to keep it flush enough so I could get the, the panel back on. Alright, let's go back around to the front again. Alright, down here on the bottom, as I said, this is removable. You can take this off. It has grommets up here on the top. So this could be removed. You have room for one SSD. And again, underneath, if you want, you can put, instead of a hard drive, you could mount another SSD. Basically, you have, you have holes under here where you have some grommets, and that's where you attach either your 3.5 inch or your 2.5 inch SSD. Let's flip it back up and take a look again. I also recommend that if you, are if you are worried about maybe the range of your, of your heat sink coming out, as I said, this is just like totally gigantic, as you can see, even though it's a, fl a flat platform. Also, we have the smaller heat sink. I wish it would fit, but it's not going to fit. What I would suggest is maybe getting yourself an AIO. One thing good about the Pandora, and we'll go ahead and take off the front bezel here so I can give you a look at that. One thing about the Pandora, you can fit up to a 240 millimeter, millimeter uh, AIO. This happens to be a Corsair H100i, 240 millimeters. As you can see, the rad fits in perfectly. I have my two fans, which are on the inside. So, of course, this is going to be mounted in a pull situation. You can put a 120 up here and use a push-pull combination. But remember, if you're using a push-pull combination, you're going to give yourself that much, that much of a less clearance from the front. So what I suggest is if you're going to use something, maybe get yourself a nice 240 so you can get better airflow coming in and across your components because remember you only have that top airflow coming down. We need that push out to exhaust all that hot air. This is not windowed, so there is no window on this specific one. And yes, they do have a windowed version. So let's take a look at the front bezel. The front bezel is plastic. It's nice and shiny. But there's something special about this. It also has a 2.4 inch LED display in it, which you could actually change the pictures in. You could use a PNG or a JPEG. And as long as it's, I think it's 230 by 240 or 240 by 330, you could put, you could install your image with the, uh, with the app that BitPhoenix has. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. I'll show you the picture that I changed it to. But again, now, you have, you have the room to build, but this case specifically has the lack of room for cable management. If you're somebody who just likes to throw cables around and you just don't know or have the patience, this is not going to be the case for you. Wire routing is very important in this in order to hide the wires the correct way to get the flush mount so you could actually get that back panel on. I'll go ahead and put this back on here. Okay. 
Now let's go ahead and retake a look at the front. As you can see, there's a nice, nice amount of room to work with, even with the AIO in here. It is, pretty, it, it is pretty easy to get your hands underneath and get your things plugged in, but as I said, you're going to want to actually put the wires in first, then route them through the grommets up here on the top, get them down inside, wrap them up, get them underneath so you have the room for cable management, or else you're just going to have a whole bunch of ball of wax down here. We do have adequate airflow coming across the front of the case towards the back, with the extra fan on top, we're getting a little bit more downward pressure on it, so it forces the air out through the back. We do have some room to work in here between the power supply and the uh, three and a half inch hard drive. But as I said, you're going to have to be able to pull this out in order to plug in your hard drive. So this actually, this piece here, this actual bracket here, comes out with a screw that's in the back. There's two, there's two uh, clamps here on the bottom that you actually slide in so it secures it. All in all, this is not a bad case. The thing is, is you're going to need time to figure out how to manage the case itself when you're wiring it in order to get maximum airflow quality out of it. Last but not least, let's go ahead and take a look at the top. Of course, again, at the top, we have our HD audio outputs. We have USB 3.0. This is your power button, and this is your reset, and also your HDD LED. So putting it back together is fairly simple. I didn't put on the, uh, on the dust filter, so let me go ahead and put the dust filter back on. Dust filter is magnetic, so you won't have a problem doing that. Just go ahead and slap it on. Take your wire again. Put on your front bezel comes off pretty simple now what I do first is I usually put the front panel on and I'll tell you why you're gonna have to lay it down in order to get your other panel on and make sure that it's secure and make sure that your wires are correct because if you don't the panel is just not gonna seat correctly and you won't be able to get it back on you'll have gaps and it'll be left open Press that back on, bring it back up, let's get my top fan vent, which easily clicks in this way, you, you put the back side in first, click it down, it's in. Take a look at the specifications and then I'll give you my final thoughts. So the Pandora case, again, let's just to, to cap everything off. Aluminum, steel, and plastic. Of course, the plastic would be the front, the steel would be the actual insides, and of course, the aluminum, the outside of the case. You have room for three two and a half inch uh, SSDs or two three and a half inch SSDs with the opportunity to put two extra, I mean, HDDs, and with the opportunity to put two extra SSDs on the back and on the front of the panel. Five expansion slots. You have room for up to a 375 millimeter fan. Um, cooling size, the, the size of the cooler can't be more than 134 millimeters. You also have one 120 up on the top and one 120 in the front with the opportunity to expand to another 120 to give you 240. It is capable of holding an AIO up to 240. Actually, it looks like it even could hold maybe, maybe a 280. So, very good design. It's a very nice, sleek looking case. 
the LED up front gives it an extra panache to it, whether it's gimmicky or not. At least, you know, hey, you want to put a picture of you hugging your dog, you can do it, you know what I mean? Cable management, I don't know. I will tell you that much. I know that they say, state that there's cable management, but there really isn't in this case. If you don't take your time and really think and plan it out, you're going to be here for two, two and a half hours actually getting everything so you have enough airflow going through in the front. We're going to go ahead and give this a gold award because it is a very nice case. It's well built. There's a lot of room on the inside. You've got a lot of good airflow and everything. So overall, we get a gold. As per the level of expertise that you need, we're going to give it a silver because you do have to be somewhat of an expert when it comes to actually laying out a case and planning. It's not something that if you're inexperienced with wire management, if you're inexperienced with actually building, this is might be your first DIY build. It's not something that I suggest that you really get into. Other than that, I want to say thank you everyone for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Remember, High Tech Legion sponsors all of their reviews. Stay thirsty, Dad. <laughs> Stay thirsty, my friends. I will see you the next time. Bye-bye.